Hi and welcome to Easy Fishing. It's half past six on Friday evening and I'm down my local stretch of the Grand Union. Now I'm doing two methods tonight for close in work. This will please the purists. I've gone back to old school, a centre pin, 11 foot rod, three pound line and a small Drennan AS3 pole float taking 0.3 grams, size 22 hook to 08 suplex. Uh, that's going to be fished under the rod top in conjunction with maggots. As well, I've set up a 10 foot, my 10 foot Drennan ultralight bomb rod. And with this, I've got a little link ledger set up as I showed you in how to set up a versatile lead rig and that is uh, going to be fished with sweet corn on a hair rig with a bait spike. Uh, the hook length on this is three pound fluorocarbon and the hook is a B983 in size 16 hair rigged with a bait spike. The reason for this is at this time of the day I could well get something a bit bigger. There's a lot of carp in this stretch, not in this swim I don't think, a bit further down but they're here. And there's also what I've been setting up in about 15 boats going past. And the canals backwards and forwards. So for when I can't fish the pole float close in, I'll have a chuck with this. So let's get on with it. Now, feed wise, I'm going to be feeding five or six grains, no more, of Jolly Green Giant. And I'll put them out about 15 yards downstream and across onto the far shelf, fed with a catapult. So, let's uh, get the float rig in the water. That sound should please a lot of you old-fashioned purists, me included, I hasten to add. And I'm going to start off with a single white maggot. I only have a pint of white and reds with me, a tin of sweet corn and a loaf of bread hopefully that will be more than enough so here comes the first boat but they're going nice and slowly which is lovely i'm just gagging for a cup of tea and all i've got is a uh, bottle of water so we'll just drop this in under the rod top plumbed it up fishing about an inch off the bottom Same feeding routine as any other on the canal, just a pinch. Now hopefully, because we get a warming up, action should be fairly in. And about every five minutes or so, I'm gonna catapult sweet corn over to the other side. I could put a swim feeder on if I wanted on my versatile rig but I've got no uh, liquid ice feed or ground bait. I came out in such a rush everything got held up so um, it has to be a leak ledger. But like I say I'm just every few minutes at the moment I'm going to count that one, two, three, four, five, six grains of corn. I'm just going to feed that across. I'm definitely going to make an effort not to overfeed. So, let's concentrate on this float rod. I must admit, I don't often get a chance to use a centre pin. This is only a very cheap one. I think it was less than 40 quid. I'd like a better one, but it will do for the amount I use it. I do do some trotting with it especially in the winter when we've got a bit more flow in the river. If you're lucky enough to live alongside a faster flowing like the river, like the Trent or the Severn or the Y, a centipin's a, a pretty good tool to have. But at the moment, I'm just gonna relax. I'm gonna actually gonna put the rod down and have a sip of water because I'm thirsty, it's hot.
Now I've only got a couple of hours, so I'm going to try not to stress about this. Just see if I can relax and enjoy it. And I'm already, I'm seeing loads of bird life, which is great. Oh, and loads of bites, which I just looked up to see my float disappearing. Typical. But who cares? Sure, there'll be plenty more. I better just check the mug and make sure that one hasn't. Uh... The reason you can hear the ratchet is this reel is so free running with a centre pin, it's all too easy to uh, get an overrun. Yep. And also on this cheap reel, it's quite a coarse, loud ratchet as you can hear. But other than that, it's an identical what I'd fish on a pole or a whip. Fishing directly off the rod tend. Now, one viewer said, could he see the, we see the float? Well, regrettably on my own, and with the camera, how I have to have it situated because it's wired, cannot have it behind me, otherwise I would have push bikes, dogs, walkers ripping my camera off so unfortunately you have to look at my ugly face but never mind incredible hulk was uglier than me but people didn't mind looking at him So um, it might take a few minutes to get the fish feeding, but I'm sure I will. Just want to relax and enjoy this. People who've never made films don't realize how stressful this can be. You know, you think people think, oh, you just go fishing and stick your camera on. Mm, that's what I thought until I tried it. Now the canal's pulling, so I can just pick the rod up, just let it run slowly down. This is my old canal float rod, though. Um, I've had it a few years now. 60 quid it was, I don't know if they're still available. I got it from a firm called Fisherman's Friend, and it's an 1113. You can use it at either 11 foot or 13 foot. I only ever use it at the 11. But it's a lovely light little float rod. It's a bit sloppy compared to my Drennan, but it's nice and soft. Yeah, picked up a bit of weed there. You're gonna have to take this ratchet off because it really annoys me. But you have to make sure with a little light float like this, because it won't pull off the line so easily. that you don't get a tangle. I'm just using it out of sentiment really and to please people to show that, that, them that I do appreciate some of the older methods. And again, this video is, there we go, first fish. And what have we got? We have a little roach. And uh, when I was putting my keep net out, I found that my ancient Shakespeare cheap keep net is falling apart. So this is probably going to be its last trip. And I'm fishing a, a short line. I've got about two feet or less between the 
hole uh, between the rod top and the float so I can, in fact I'm going to shorten that down even more, got it down to about a foot now so I can use it just like a pole. Better than a whip in some ways because it has a very short line. <coughs> and just as a thought, I'm also going to feed three or four grains of corn down here. And after an hour or so, I might try it on a piece of corn. Unlikely, but you never know. Might be some skimmers or something similar in. Oh. Oh, missed that one. I don't know quite how, but I did. So the fish are obviously in a mood to feed. They're probably only going to be little gudgeon, roach, perch, that sort of thing, small skimmers. But uh, in all honesty, I'm happy whatever I catch. I hope this comes across in my videos because I think it's important. If you look upon a big fish as a bonus, then any fish is great, you know, and if it's you get a better one, that's a bonus. Unless of course you are specifically targeting big fish. And I must admit in my own fishing when I'm not doing this, I do like to target quality fish, but again I really enjoy this. <sighs> to me, fishing is relaxation, being outside, enjoying myself, unwinding from a quite a stressful life that I lead. I wish this ratchet was quieter, I hate it. But uh, the fish are obviously feeding. Unfortunately, because I'm still not very well, my hands have got the shakes. I'm finding I had difficulty tackling up today. So I'm just going to relax. Throw a few maggots in. Catch a couple of grains of sweet corn. Even though you're relaxing, you should still be doing your best to catch fish. Now, now the canal's gone completely still, I can't get a bite. And I was getting quite regular. But, oh, having said that. <coughs> typical, no sooner the words out of my mouth than I'll get a fish. All right, they're only little tiny fish at the moment. Let's try red maggot this time for a change. Now, if you pick your time of day fishing like this and are quiet, don't make too much disturbance. Unfortunately, with a camera trying to set it all up, you inevitably make disturbance. But if you can fish baits like hemp and caster, sometimes you can pick up some surprisingly good fish. And once or twice doing this, I've had the rod almost ripped out my hands by a cop. And on this light rod, I really would like to get one because I would love to hear that real screaming. Just make sure you do not stop feeding. It doesn't have to be very much, but it needs to be pretty constant. Feeding is the key to catching virtually all fish, big or small. Now the canal's running a little bit, I'll pick the rod up. 
just let the float move down the swim slightly. You can maintain a tight light to, line to it. And it's just a very delicate form of float fishing, that's all. Just using a pole float because it's more delicate with a finer bristle. And I missed that bite. <laughs> Quite a lightning dart under. It would have probably been better if I'd have used punched bread and uh, liquidised bread as feed, but I didn't have time to do any. Um, I went to the freezer and I'd used up the last of my uh, frozen liquidised, so uh, this evening I might spend... Uh, well, it won't be this evening because I've got to try and edit this film, but I shall try and uh, liquidise some bread up. Slightly better quality roach here. Oh, a lie. This one's a hybrid. That was on a red maggot. Let's try again. But I do hate that noisy ratchet. Just two grains of sweet corn in close, or three in that case, and uh, half a dozen or so across. I'm always hopeful that a better fish might show up there. Probably be a bream, but could be a better roach, it could even be a carp. A bit further up there, about 200 yards from where I'm sitting, there's a well-known carp swim. Uh, been a lot of 20 pounders out of it. And they do patrol up and down here, I've seen them, so there's always a chance. And a double-figure carp on this gear would be fun. I'm pretty sure I'd get it out. But what a beautiful, tranquil evening. Thirty years ago, I couldn't have fished like this so much. I would have been too impatient and wanting to catch big fish. Now, I'm much more laid back. Get a lot more pleasure. So, if you don't possess a pole, and have no desire to own one, I think it's rather a negative view. I think, uh, at the very least, you should invest in a, in a short pole. Uh, buy a short pole, anything between six and nine metres, would enable you to cover a lot more water. Um, and while I can flick this out quite a way, if I pull off loops of line, I can't control it. Um, and for kids, get get them a simple whip. It's uh, May now, we've got May Bank holiday in a couple of days time and then we've got another one at the end of May I believe. Um, so all you mums and dads, get your kids out there, get them fishing. You know, if you've got a couple of kids, take them along, only make the session a couple of hours, plenty of, you know, kid things, crisps and fizzy drinks, which although I don't like the kids having, I think they're very unhealthy, that's what kids like. But just take along a, a whip and a couple of rigs, you know, reward them. Have, be fun, have spend time with your kids. I've just had a nice chat with a couple of guys on their way set up for a night's carping. On this particular section where I'm sat, there is no night fishing. But there are sections on the uh, canal where you can. 
the club book does explain quite clearly where they are, where the sections are. And uh, I must admit, I don't do a lot of night fishing these days. I tend to do lots of late evening sessions rather than nights. I do get out from time to time nights, but... Too many guys just bivvy up and then uh, start knocking back the beers, etc. Me, they'd laugh at what I'm doing, but I don't care. To them, these aren't fish. To me, these fish are every bit as beautiful as a as a twenty pound carp. And there goes the green woodpecker again. Green woodpeckers always signify the uh, birds of summer. They're rather raucous calls. And they are the green woodpeckers that make that noise. Yaffling, the old country boys call it. And uh, they generally, I believe, uh, feed on the ground, feeding on ants and things. They do feed in the trees, taking insects, obviously, but uh, I've seen most of them feeding on the ground. So, even though I'm talking to the camera, I'm still feeding close in, I'm still catapulting odd bits of corn out. I've only got a, a very small tin of Jolly Green Giant. It'll do for a short session. So my bait bill tonight was uh, £3.50 for the maggots. 80p I think it was because I had to go to a corn shop so it was expensive for the corn and a pound for a loaf of bread. Uh, I might not even use the bread. And here come the next overloaded donkeys pushing their wheelbarrows. Now after I've been chatting with these guys that are passing me, bites have stopped and so clattered up and down the towpath, but I'm sure they'll restart. Um, it would be nice to see a fish or two. In fact, I'm going to have a look at my watch in a minute, and maybe have my first chuck on the bottom. Let's have a look what time it is. No, I've only been feeding it for half an hour, it's not long enough yet. I want to give that at least an hour. So I'll just carry on catching what oh, this top looks like a little stripey. Who's undoubtedly swallowed the hook? Oh yes, can't even see it. No, I don't mind stripies, but I prefer them when they're a lot bigger than that. I mean, they do go to uh, real big fish in here, four pound pluses. And I dare say in some areas there's probably a five pounder or so lurking around somewhere. And I do target them from time to time. But like I say, tonight, I'm not worried what I do. Just sitting here with a simple float rig and a short rod, 
loads of fun. I know I'm not seeing the world alight, but I'm enjoying myself. And I'm just hoping that maybe some better fish are finding that corn. I've been catapulting further across and slightly downstream of me. The reason I've done it not directly in front of me is that I want to keep away from it. Um, I want the fish to have as much time to uh, feel confident on the bait. It's like someone's opened a lock again. Canal flying along like a, like a river. Which is, oh, what's this? It's actually putting a bend in the rod tip. This is definitely going to be a landing net job. That's a better, not monster, but a better quality perch. A few maggots in. There it is. Nice little stripey. Gonna get slimed up, aren't I? <laughs> I do have a fondness for the uh, perch. Whoops. Even though this one's only a little one. It, I still like catching them. And a big perch is a magnificent fish. So, so far I've had a couple of gudgeon, a couple of perch, some roach, some hybrids and a skimmer. Nothing going to set the world alight, won't be setting any match records. But like I said, it's not what this is about. A couple of grains of corn in close. I'm actually really looking forward to casting a bomb to that far side. That sounds like a song thrush. That's a song thrush. I love their song. Such a shame they've declined. Now it's gone still again. He's very close wherever he is, complete with a few other birds. Now my float, I've got shotted just with a small bulk of number 10s. I think they're two number 11 droppers. But I can spread them out in shirt button style if I wish to give a more of a drop presentation. Uh, and now we've got a blackbird in the tree behind me singing away. I can see him. And with the canal not moving, fish seem to have stopped biting. But 
I'm quite confident they'll come back. I'm going to just try a small piece of corn on the hook. So I've been feeding corn down here quite regularly. I won't try it for long, but I'm just curious. We keep feeding the maggots though, same as before. Oh, blimey, I had a bite on it straight away. <laughs> so surprised I didn't even strike. Oh! Yes. A bit enthusiastic there, I've got a bit of a tangle. Let's sort that out. Now, when you get a tangle, Whatever you do, do not be tempted to just yank at it because you will just put it into a tight knot and it will never come undone. But that one just shook out. Now that was interesting. I'm going to put another piece of corn on. Could be some better fish. Hello, Mr. Wren. I can hear you. Corn's quite a selective bait, but it can be very good. Especially later in the evening like this, or very early in the morning. It's a very fast bite too. Uh -oh. Now what's the canal doing? It's going to go backwards, right. Oh well. Oh yes, oh! That looks a marginally better fish. It's definitely a landing net job. Oh, it's a nice skimmer. I wondered if it would be. They do like a bit of corn, better skimmers. There we go. Well, not a monster, but it's the biggest one I've had tonight. I know that's not saying a lot, but... Uh, Oh, he wanted that corn. Well, oh, that's encouraging. It's soon be time to try the corn across. And I'm picking out the smallest grains. Tangled me up in the net a bit, that one. Ah. Oh dear, he's also left a load of slime, which I should have to clear off. Yep. Yeah. Always looks like they're suffering from a bad cold. Two or three grains of corn, half a dozen maggots. So, that's up the uh, weight in the net. I know that's not saying a lot, but. Uh, Still nice to get. And here comes the canal boat.
Hi. Yes, I've caught quite nothing huge, but I'm having a, I've caught a lot of fish and I'm having a lovely time. That's what, and that's what that's about, isn't it? Having a nice time. And you too. Do you know, I really don't think the uh, fish are unduly perturbed by boat traffic. In fact, I sometimes think it can actually be good. But now I've spent a bit more, I'll give this another five minutes and then I'm going to go across on the lead. So let's just put the uh, rod down for a minute. This probably means I'll get a screaming bite, but who cares. Oh yes, the canal is now a beautiful muddy cloud. But like I say, I don't think that really affects the fish. If anything, I guess it probably disturbs the bottom and lifts food up off the bottom. Anglers seem to think that the uh, boats are the kiss of death, but I, um, I would dispute that. Three bits of corn this time, a bit enthusiastic there. But I haven't had anything else on corn, so... I'm not going to waste too much more time on it. And yeah, it's almost time to go across with a lead rod, which is something I'm hoping the tip will go around with a better fish, but it might be nothing and I might, I'll give it, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes. And I'll stop again. Feed that bit of corn in. Right, time to place the uh, float rod down and swap for the lead rod. Let's get a baiting needle. Put a single bit of corn now. You can experiment with corn. You can either put it on lengthwise or sideways. Uh, that one's a bit broken. It's fine, an unbroken bit. I'm just going to start off. Oh, my baiting needle looks like it's broken. Yeah. That will do. No, I really do like quick stops and hair rigs for this kind of thing. One, they make baiting up really easy. And you do seem to hook a lot more fish when you hair rig. And it stays on the hook securely. So, let's just uh, check the clutch is nice and loose. And... Now all I want to do is just tighten this up so that the quiver tip is very slightly under tension. Slack out the line. Sink the line under the water. I'm going to carry on feeding the inside line now. Odd piece of corn, a few maggots, and just uh, feeding a odd bit of corn over. This catapult's a bit powerful for this. and just two grains 
to my faith. Now this might be a total waste of time, but uh, there's a, I should give it 15 minutes by my watch, no more. Oh, that was a definite pull. I've got a one ounce carbon quiver tip in here, so it's pretty fine. Probably could have gone less, but uh, Hmm. Shows there's something over there interested. Definitely don't want to overfeed with corn. It's quite a filling bait. And you don't want the fish picking up all the loose offerings and not finding your hook bait. So I'm going to sit back and relax for a bit. And ledgering is not something you see people doing on canals very much, but it can be very effective. If I was fishing serious, serious session or in a match on here, I would definitely have at least one whip with a quiver tip in it set up for ledgering under my rod top for when it flows hard and I would almost certainly be doing this over the other side, maybe with chopped worm, with a piece of worm. Incidentally, you can fish a worm on the hair rig very successfully. Ooh, it's another little knock. It's definitely something moving around there. They're not what I would call bites. They're too sharp like that. They're not, unless they're roach. And look at that. Can I, oh. Well, that was definitely a bite and I missed it. Mm. Yep, corn's still on there, still intact. Well, I was trying to take a handheld video shot as, and while I was looking through the uh, handheld viewfinder, the tip went round. Typical. Oh yes. And what have we got? Probably a skimmer by the feel of this. Or, or a good roach, I'm not sure. Oh. Well, that's definitely, uh, oh, that's a lovely roach for a canal. There, yeah, I wondered if those pools were roach, and uh, my suspicions have been confirmed. There we have a lovely roach of about, oh, I don't know, eight ounces, I guess. Not a monster, but what a beautiful fish. Now, as far as canal roach goes, that's a good one. Oh, I'm pleased now. Pleased now. Did wonder, it's that time of day when the roach will feed a bit more confidently. 
Oh, another bit of corn out there. Try again. I'm still experimenting with these B983s, but the more I use them, the more I'm liking them. They seem to work very well. Whoops, that wasn't a very good cast. It's a good thing about it though, with hair rigged it won't come off. There we go. Let's see if he's got any more brothers and sisters out there the same size. Or even better still, his grandparents. Or great grandparents even. Whoa, that went everywhere. Better. Wow. That was a uh, very nice roach to catch. Carry on. And another one. And it's another quality fish. Open another roach. This rod is so... Oh, yes. Is this a roach? And it looks like it. Oh, I shouldn't do this, but I'm going to. And this one's a hybrid by the looks of it. Doesn't look quite pure bream. He's taking a hook down as well. Very nice. I'm leaving the quiver tip with only the minutest bend in it because roach can be extremely resistant shy. Well, I'm quite happy now. Got a few fish on the inside, a couple of decent ones on sweet corn. Make that three decent ones. That hammered that quiver tip round. Another roach by the looks of it. Oh yes. Shouldn't lift it, but oh that one's a nice roach. Oh yes, on a bit of a roll. And it is a simple method, nice soft rod. I suppose that's the main essential that you've got a soft rod. Not some carp poker. So after all, I'm, I'm only using a three pound hook link, which is quite strong for canal fishing, but uh, like I said, I did hope there was a chance of a carp or something, so hence why my hook link choice. Well, I am a very happy bunny right now, very contented, 
And look at that, drying my hands, another fish straight away. Oh, that's a better one. That's a landy net job. Now you could float fish all day with maggots here and not see fish of this size. A lot of people don't realise they're in here, but they are. Uh, oh, so another hybrid. It looks like Cormorant's had a stab at this one. There you go, Bill, mate. Yes, very satisfying. A few maggots on the inside, three bits of corn, these uh, quick stops are a great invention, as you've seen they work really really well, and I'm setting up a very basic hair rig, nothing uh, Spectacular here. Not even putting any silicone on the shank, which I probably should have done. But hey, it might be crude, but it's working. I think probably the hair rig was uh, one of the biggest steps forward in fishing. As the fish takes the bait, doesn't fill the hook, swallows the bait, fills the hook, tries to spit the hook out, and literally hooks itself. So yes, I'm very contented now. Well, the light's fading, so I'm going to, unfortunately, have to call it quits fairly soon, as it'll be too dark to film. Um, it's quarter past eight, so I've been here for a, uh, an hour and three quarters. And I've had a very, very pleasant session. And I've caught a few better quality fish. No record breakers. But uh, it's been very pleasant. And I hope this has uh, helped you uh, non-pole loading anglers. But anyway, as I was saying, I hope this is uh, another couple of methods uh, for those who don't like poles. Close in range, old school with a centre pin, but modern end tackling so much as a, a small pole float, small hook, fine line. Uh, no worries if you should hook a big fish because you've got running line to play it on. Um, and the light link ledger, very effective, especially hair rigging baits. Um, and as I, you've seen me catch a few quality fish. In about another five minutes or so, I'm going to have to uh, lift it out for a catch shot. Well, here we go. Quite a nice net full of fish. Nothing huge. Best roach. Uh, this one here. Nice fish. Ten ounces, I suppose. Got two or three like that. Some skimmer bream. Perch. Gudging, as you can see, not bad. So, thanks for watching Easy Fishing. Hope you've all learnt a bit from that. And now I've got to jack it all in and go home. So, until next time, tight lines. <laughs>